If you've been watching my channel for a while, by now you've probably heard me talk about red flags, relationship red flags, things that you and I <laughs> should be looking out for when we're looking for someone to enter into a long-term relationship or a marriage with. Potential indications of problems down the line, potential indications of likely, potentially problematic future behavior that someone demonstrates, exemplifies, either in their present, in your present interactions with them, or potentially in their past. I received a comment recently from a viewer asking me about my own relationship red flags. And I thought about it and I thought I might as well share it with you. I think many of you will probably be interested. So in today's video, I'm gonna share what are my personal relationship red flags. My name is Zachary Stockhill and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world, every corner of this planet, overcome jealousy and possessiveness in their relationships, overcome retroactive jealousy and often save their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or you'd like more information about my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. So first off, right from the outset, I wanna make it clear that these are Zach's red flags. These are my red flags. They may not be and probably won't be your red flags. And if you disagree with one of my red flags, that's okay. Because the whole point of this, and the whole point of this video in some ways, is to inspire you to think about your own red flags, to think about your own dating standards, to be picky and choosy when it comes to who you invite into your life on a long-term basis. There's endless research that says that is literally the most consequential decision you will ever make for your entire life. So it's important, in fact, it's essential in my view, to be extremely picky, to be extremely choosy. And frankly, I am exactly that. I am very picky, I am very choosy, not because I think I'm so amazing and so wonderful, but because I know that this is a big deal. In terms of who I am inviting into my life on a long-term basis, who I'm making my girlfriend or potential future wife, this is a big deal, I need to be careful. But I am not looking for perfection. And I think that's also important, uh, really important actually, to note here, because a lot of people drive themselves and others absolutely crazy when they go looking for perfection, right? No one is perfect. No one has a perfect past, whatever that even means. No one has a perfect present. I am certainly not perfect. You probably aren't either. The goal here is not to look for perfection because perfection doesn't exist. I think a pretty good way to think about this is using something that a mentor of mine talks about called the 10% rule. And the 10% rule basically stipulates that there's going to be 10% of just about anything, whether it's a job, whether it's the city you live in, whether it's your partner, your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, there's gonna be 10% of anything you love that is going to be kind of a challenge. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the neck every once in a while, but hopefully it's only 10%, right? The other 90% hopefully makes up for the 10% that is kind of a challenge. So the goal is not to look for perfection. The goal is simply to have standards in the first place, to consider them carefully, and to look for someone who is around maybe 90% compatible with you, your goals, and your dreams for the future. My number one red flag is pretty simple, and I can boil it down in a single term, and that term is impulse control. I'm not necessarily interested in someone's exact number of the sexual partners they've had in the past, I'm not necessarily interested in you know, all these things or, or specific quantifiable uh, metrics such as someone's number. What I'm way more interested in is impulse control. Because if you have someone without a lot of impulse control, it could and will likely lead to all kinds of problems and complications and chaos and drama down the line. And frankly, I don't want that in my life. I wanna keep that far away. So what is impulse control? Impulse control is basically the ability to say no. The ability to stay rational and think rationally in highly charged emotional situations. The ability sometimes to deny your own worst instincts and impulses. Some examples of someone with poor impulse control is someone who you get in an argument in a relationship or you have some kind of conflict and they immediately say, we're breaking up, I'm gone. You know, they leave the house, they don't answer their phone, something like that. Or maybe worse, they start breaking your dishes and throwing them at you and saying you're a horrible person or whatever. Thankfully, I haven't experienced that in my own life, but I, I hear stories. Another example of someone with sort of poor impulse control is someone who, for example, goes to bed with all kinds of people and it's not really making them happy. It's not really making them satisfied. They're a deeply miserable, deeply unhappy person. You ask them why they're, they're doing this to themselves when it clearly isn't working for them. And they say, you know, I can't say no. You know, I just, I couldn't, deny that, that impulse. I couldn't deny that guy or that woman or whatever. You probably know what I'm talking about. 
And if you meet someone, or should I say personally, when I meet someone where it's clear that they really lack impulse control, that gives me serious pause when I think about entering a long-term relationship with them. Now remember, of course, that there's a difference between being a fundamentally impulsive person, prone to making really bad life choices, and having the occasional you know, bad impulse, or the giving in, shall we say, to the occasional bad impulse. Perfect example, it's the new year, I'm trying to lose weight, I ate a little bit of ice cream last night when I shouldn't have, right? I mean, that's a sort of a minor silly example, but that was a moment of me being impulsive, but hopefully it isn't a big deal. And in the rest of my life, and frankly in my diet, for the most part, I'm pretty disciplined. And frankly, there's a bit of discipline and self-control that is necessary, I think, in any long-term relationship, because we're always gonna have moments, if we're in a long-term relationship or marriage, of being tempted by someone else, of being tempted by a sexy new coworker or a sexy new barista or whatever. Someone flirts with us and it feels nice and we wanna send a flirty text back or like their photos and you, you get my drift. There's all these temptations that come up in a long-term relationship. And frankly, I wanna be with someone who has the self-awareness and frankly discipline to deny those kind of fleeting superficial instincts to focus on what's really important, the ability to say no when necessary. Related to that, my second red flag, and these are kind of broad categories, but it's tough to boil everything down, but my second red flag is a lack of self-awareness, okay? What I mean by that is someone who's making choices in life, someone who's kind of going through life without any real consciousness, without any awareness of where they're going and where they want to go and their strengths and their weaknesses and all the rest. A lot of these people describe their lives uh, in terms like, you know, things just kind of happened to me or it just kind of happened, right? And obviously there's an amount or, or degree of, call it fate or serendipity, that can be nice, frankly, in life. You know, I'm not one of those people who has to strategically plan every single move and every single decision and all the rest. But I wanna be with someone who's relatively self-aware. Again, who knows their strengths, who knows their weaknesses, who knows that they're not perfect, who knows that I'm not perfect, frankly, that's also very important someone who's aware of all these things, so we can actually have a really mature adult relationship. You know, so much of this stuff, when I think about it, in terms of red flags, I wanna be with an adult, frankly, and I think that's what most of you probably should be looking for if you want a mature relationship with someone who you can actually bounce ideas off with, someone who you can actually build a long-term future with, I think you want an adult. And frankly, this sounds harsh, but there are a lot of uh, adult age people out there, in my view, who aren't really adults, who haven't let go of some of their childhood baggage and who haven't done real serious work and interrogation on themselves. And frankly, some of this is not their fault. Some of them you know, came from really dysfunctional family backgrounds and obviously that can wreak havoc on their lives you know, all, all the way through. I don't mean to vilify anyone here, but if you're asking me, again, personal red flags, I wanna be with someone who's self-aware of their strengths, weaknesses, who they are, where they wanna go, and all the rest. Related note, I don't wanna be with someone who thinks of themselves and defines themselves as a victim. Yeah, and you probably know what I'm talking about. The kind of person who's always complaining, and this happened to me, and this person said this, and made me feel this way, and all the rest. I often say, I'm not so interested in talking to victims. Show me survivors, you know? We've all been through some difficult experiences. I have scars, both literally and figuratively, but I don't like thinking of myself as a victim of anyone or any situation or anything. And I don't wanna be with someone who describes himself as a victim, who thinks of themselves as a victim either. And finally, I've shared the biggest one for last, and I could spend hours and hours just talking about this. But my final red flag is just in general, a lack of shared values. Now again, I told you this was relatively broad, so I'll get more specific in a moment. But to start off with, you probably know what a value is. It's something you value in life. It could be related to your morals or the things you believe or the goals you have or the things you want to aspire to or the personality traits in yourself that you want to cultivate, the personality traits in yourself that you admire in others. These in general are our values and they're really important. So for example, I want to be with someone who I have multiple shared values with. And one of my values is honesty. I really believe in honesty and I know fundamentally that if I meet someone and there's just habitual deception, habitual little lies here and there, and I can never believe what they're saying, we're, we don't have a relationship. And frankly, if you have a partner like that who's just habitually lying all the time, you don't have a relationship either because you don't really know who that person is and they don't know who you are because the entire relationship is based on lies and deception. I am not interested in that. I don't care how wonderful that person is. I don't care how sexy that person is. If you're lying to me on a consistent basis, I just, I really don't want to have anything to do with you. I think a shared commitment to honesty 
even when it's painful, even when it hurts, even when I might not like what you're saying to me about me, I think that's extremely important in a relationship. Another value of mine and something I really value is a great sex life. And if I meet someone who, you know, we have a great intellectual connection and they're very nice and, you know, we get along great and we're best buddies and all the rest, but there's no sexual connection there or perhaps her sex drive is much, much lower than mine, then I'm not saying she's a terrible person. I'm not saying in any of this, by the way, that someone's a terrible person, but you get, you get what I'm saying. We just don't have that shared value. They don't value sex probably the way that I do. And if so, there's nothing wrong with that. It's goodbye and God bless and go find someone who's more compatible with you. That's another really important perspective to keep, I think, through all this stuff. It's not about going out and judging the world and saying, you're a bad person and you're a this and you're a that and I'm better than you. Absolutely not. It's about having personal standards. And if someone doesn't share that standard or someone doesn't share that value, that's absolutely fine. It's just probably in everyone's best interest to simply say goodbye and God bless and walk away. Another value that's very important is money, right? There's a lot of things in the world that I value way more than money. Time being a big one, love being a big one, I, I won't get cheesy on you, but the point is there's a lot that I value much more than money. But frankly, some people don't feel that way. And ask me how I know. <laughs> I've met and dated them. Some people really do value money above all else. And if so, that's fine, you do you. But it's probably not going to work out because again, we don't have that shared value. There's a lot that I value much more than money. Religion is another one, right? Now I have my own personal spiritual beliefs. Um, I could talk about them in another video if you really want, but I am not, for example, a hardcore militant Christian or Muslim or Jew, or I don't belong to any established religion and you know, I'm a devout believer or follower of any one sect or faith. And frankly, if I met someone who had extremely ironclad religious convictions, for me, that probably wouldn't be a great match. The final uh, red flag or value that I'll, that I'll mention, uh, it's a bit of a, I'm not sure exactly if it fits into values, but I want someone with shared family values. So for example, I have met uh, certain people who came from, shall we call it rather dysfunctional families, a family background that was radically different from my own. You know, I was very lucky to have two great supportive, loving parents and yada, yada. I'm very lucky. And I've met some people who came from extremely chaotic family backgrounds. And frankly, they still cultivated that energy and dysfunction in, well into their adult years, right? And again, it's not like anyone's a terrible person or this or that, but if we don't have shared family values, a shared vision of the future, a shared vision, frankly, of the family that we may one day want to create, it's probably not gonna work out, so it's probably best to move on. So again, I could go on all day about this stuff. Maybe I'll make a part two, <laughs> more red flags to look out for. But those are really the big ones for me. Lack of impulse control, lack of self-awareness, lack of shared values. And in summation, I would ask you, what are your red flags? What are your relationship red flags? What do you look out for to maybe keep at bay? If you're on the dating market, what kind of things are you actually looking for in your dating life? I'd love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts on that or any thoughts for me, please be sure to leave a comment beneath this video telling me what you think. If you got anything at all out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll be talking to you again very soon.